Well, to tell us a little more about what's happening in Portugal, our Europe editor, Armin Georgian, is with me. And Armin, walk us through what's likely to happen next, because I understand it'll be a while before a government is formed. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the procedure, we, we still have to wait for the uh, results to be counted for Portuguese living abroad. And actually, there are four seats still to be distributed based mm. on that result, which won't be published until March the 20th. So we have, what is it, uh, ten, around 10 days before we actually know the final result. And in this situation, those four seats are significant because, remember, there's only two seats now between the two main blocks as things stand at the moment. So you've got uh, the Democratic Alliance, the centre-right, on 79 seats, the Socialists on 77 seats. So we still have to factor in these four extra seats. Um, is that going to change the overall balance? Well, maybe it will change the balance between the Socialists and the, the centre-right. It doesn't change the fragmentation of the Portuguese political mm. system, which we've seen in many other countries as well in elections. Uh, and we've also seen as a result of that fragmentation, for example, in the Netherlands, uh, it takes a very long time to form a coalition. The talks are still going on after months. In Spain, after the same kind of fragmentation of the political scene, yes, there was a coalition agreement, but it's clearly very fragile because of the demands of smaller parties, so to speak. So I think we're looking at probably quite a protracted, potentially protracted period of negotiations in Portugal. But certainly after March the 20th, when, as I said, these votes from abroad will be known, that's when the president of Portugal will be formally begin consultations to see who should uh, form the government, who should try, I should say, to form the next government. And I, I, I understand that this could be some time away, but I think the big question that lots of people mm. want to understand right now is, will the far right be part of that government whenever it's formed? Well, at the moment, the centre-right says no. So mm. Luis Montenegro, he's still uh, insisting on this effectively kind of cordon sanitaire around uh, the far right. And it's interesting, he says uh, no governing coalition with the far right Che Party, but also no deals with them. So that seems to be ruling out, for example, the Swedish scenario where you had also a breakthrough of the far right, but they didn't enter government. What they do have is a supply and confidence agreement with the uh, governing coalition in Sweden. So far, Luis Montenegro seems to be ruling out that option. But it's interesting to see what uh, Chega is doing to try to make itself more palatable to Portuguese voters. So now, um, uh, uh, Andre Ventura, the head of, of Chega, he says he's prepared to drop some of the more controversial stances that his party has. For example, chemical castration of some sex offenders. Mm. And this reminds me a lot of what Gert Wilders in the Netherlands did after he had his breakthrough in the Netherlands. You know, he's started to drop some of the more controversial things, you know, the ban on mosques, for example, he said he could definitely compromise on that. So Chega will certainly do what it can uh, to try to get into government because it's clear, the maths is clear, on paper at least, the right plus the far right would have a majority mm -hmm. in the Portuguese uh, parliament. So I think it depends on ultimately uh, what happens with the other parties and whether Luis Montenegro decides to maybe change his tune further down the line. We'll have to see, obviously. Portu uh, you know, Port uh, politics is, um, is, is, a, is a slippery thing, so we'll have to see. Uh, but even if Chega is kept out of power and kept out of any informal agreement, it still has these 48 seats, um, and with still four more seats to be counted, as I said, mm -hmm. they could they're clearly a force that can't be ignored. And what they're now looking at also is to building these European alliances with the with the likes of the National Rally in France. And we've had reactions from Marine Le Pen today of the National Rally here uh, to say congratulations to Andre Venturi. We look forward to building this block in the European Parliament in the elections on June the 9th to expand the European Conservatives and Reformists at the expense of traditional parties or centrist parties.